Excellent. Why don't we start with our setup? And as always, we're gonna head over to the desktop, or at least I will. And you know what? As always, I'm also gonna zoom in. Otherwise, it's gonna be hard for you to see. So we're gonna say CD desktop, and then we're gonna create a new application, create React app, and then let's just say that this was gonna be to do list. Very simple. While the recreate React is gonna be getting our dependencies and bootstrapping our applications. Let me just spend a few seconds talking about the packages. Like I said, UID is going to be very nifty external package or dependency because this is going to allow us to generate unique IDs without any kind of manual functioning or anything like that. Very simple, just install the package and then use it within the matter of 30 seconds. As well as for the bootstrap, this whole project was done with no CSS meaning we're not going to write anything in a CSS file. And that way, we're going to be able to be up and running with the application in no time. For those of you who don't know what is Bootstrap, even though I highly doubt it that there is such a person, but let's imagine that there is. And this is just a most popular front-end component library. That would be their official documentation. In a short one-sentence answer, you're getting a bunch of classes that will gonna allow you to style everything using the classes. So imagine that if you would set up everything in a CSS using the classes, instead, what you can do is you can download or get bootstrap. And by the way, there's many ways how we can use it. We're gonna use the NPM, but obviously there's another way how we can do that. We can use also the CDN if you would like. This is really up to you. But what you would need is just include bootstrap and then you can just start using it right away. If you're more interested, I actually have the whole another course on a bootstrap where we do 10,000 projects. I mean, I'm over exaggerating. It's like 10 projects, but still, I think it's a really good course. And you can understand everything that there is to know about the bootstrap. Obviously, in this project, we're going to go everything step by step of what we're doing, because there's not going to be too much CSS to begin with. But I think that bootstrap really allows us to get up and running really quickly with an application with very little effort as far as the CSS is concerned. If you want a little bit more information about the bootstrap in general, you can obviously go to their documentation if you don't want to watch any course or anything like that. And you can see over here, let's say that this would be the layout. Like I said, the general idea would be very simple. Whereas we're working, let's say this is going to be the container where we're always going to be using the classes. So there's going to be some kind of HTML element and we're just going to be attaching the classes, whether the class is going to be the container, whether this is going to be row. So let's say this would be example with three columns where we have the container, which by the way, in bootstrap, there's going to be two types of containers, whether this is going to be the container or container fluid, the fluid one is going to take up the full screen. And then the container is just going to take some parts of the screen. Then we have the row so we can start creating the layouts because the rows are going to allow us to create nested layouts if we would want to. And then always within the row, there's going to be some kind of column. So these are probably three of the most important or most popular classes that you're going to use because this is used for each and every bootstrap project where the container is going to be where you're going to be holding your information. Then the row is for the columns. And if you would want some nested columns, obviously you're going to place the row within the column. And then for the columns, you can have multiple layouts. Let's say in this case, they're going with three column layout. Then if you would want different column layout, then you start using the numbering of, let's say, how many columns you would want. And as they show here, extra small is going to be less than 576. That would be this kind of syntax. And then you have small, medium, large, and extra large. Of course, like I said, this is not a project or a course about bootstrap. So I'm going to be very brief about it. But that would be general idea. And most probably uh, used classes that you're going to see with bootstrap. Now let's head over back to our desktop. And we can see that create react has successfully finished the installation. So why don't we do a few things? First of all, we're going to navigate to a actual our project. So I'm going to say CD to the list. And now I'd like to install these two dependencies. So I'm going to say npm install dash dash save. I have UUID as well as I have bootstrap. 
so these are the two external packages that i would like to install and obviously what's going to happen right now node is going to do the magnificent job of getting these packages so the moment everything is going to be installed we are going to be able to navigate to our folder and again we have a few options but in my case i'm just going to press code dot so this is going to open up everything in the coder i'm also going to open up the new browser window just so i can run it side by side and you know what for this let's do it like this well let's say that i'm going to open up the different integrated terminal window as well and we're going to run npm and you guessed it we're going to start up our dev server and while the dev server is kicking into the gear i'm going to set this one side by side so this is going to be our small window we're all going to be able to see our changes on a small browser window then this is going to be our finished project so in that way i can always show you what we're doing step by step as well as i'm going to open up a new tab and we're going to say localhost not 8000 that's going to be for gatsby and this is going to be our currently working project why don't we right away head over to a index html and i'm going to write that this is going to be to do list however in my case i'm going to write to do list recording that way i can see that this is going to be my finished project and the recording one is the one that we're currently working and this is going to be it for the setup and the moment we have set up everything we can start working on our application